There is one game I play with my teenage daughter. And that one can be summed up in, no matter how you try, I will always find a way to break your automation. So today we will be looking at how I finally have managed to solve the problem and also lower my energy bills. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Today's video is sponsored by Switchbot, whom I really thank for both sponsoring this video and also for sending me all those nice goodies that have helped me create this video. And this video, sponsored by Switchbot, is also part of the Energy Challenge, this is series of videos by multiple creators, created in partnership with If This Then That. There are a couple of reasons why I really like Switchbot products. One reason is that they can integrate in Home Assistant. And since the version of 2022.8 of Home Assistant and the internal Bluetooth integration, it's now even easier than before to integrate them via the official integration and add them to Home Assistant. In this video today I will be playing with one of those devices and we will be using it to trick my daughter. Please note that while not all of the products that also use Bluetooth technology are compatible currently with Home Assistant and they cannot be added internally with the Home Assistant Bluetooth integration, there are still other ways on how you can do that. I've previously created video on how you can get this humidifier inside Home Assistant without using Bluetooth, either internal Bluetooth or the Bluetooth via the ESP32 and ESP Home. It can be done by using the API, because there is a really great API available from Switchbot. But there is also additional way, so if you don't use Home Assistant Bluetooth integration or device is not compatible with it, if you do not have or do not want to use ESP32 Bluetooth integration, and if you do not want to use the API that is available for the Switchbot devices, you still have webhooks. So no matter what way you choose, you can always integrate Home Assistant with the Switchbot devices. And by the way, if you are not into Home Assistant, Switchbot has really great app that works with all of the Switchbot products. And if you have Switchbot Hub Mini, then you can also access those devices via the cloud. And for all of those skeptics out there, don't forget that Switchbot's cloud is in the AVS, if this matters to you. But as I also said, this video is part of the If This Then That Energy Challenge. And I also have to thank Brian from Automate Your Life or Automate Your Love, because he's a really awesome dude. The overall purpose of this challenge is that by connecting various smart cloud services and smart devices inside your home, you save the energy, money and of course you help the environment. If you want to take the challenge, just click on Take the Challenge and fill in this web form. There are just four simple steps to join this energy challenge and if you have any issues, you can also look at the energy challenge tips. Here you will find tips that will help you with this energy challenge and if you need help, you can find it in this document on how to calculate your potential savings. But that's not all. Switchbot has partnered with More Trees HQ and they are planting trees in your name if you do take that challenge. Let's talk about my problem. My oldest daughter in her room has three lights, table light, ceiling lights with two bulbs and the floor lights which is a WLED device. And how her school routine looks is that she wakes up before we do and she usually leaves the apartment while we are still sleeping. Kids will be kids and the only thing I can bet you is that she will leave her lights on. All of the lights in the room. So what I did I create, of course, a zone for her high school, for home, and I check if she has left the home, and I turn off the lights. But unfortunately, she replaced her Android phone with the iPhone, and no matter how hard I try and do, and by using two applications, Tado and Home Assistant mobile app, the iPhone simply stops sending or updating the location after some time. I've checked all the permissions, done whatever I can do, but... Yeah, it's her phone, so I was thinking of another way on how I can solve that issue. My younger daughter is a different story, although this can apply sometimes to her, usually, or more or less every time, she has to wake up, we are already up, and we wake her up and send her off to school. 
so the lights there are more or less more under our control and we do try to keep the lights off when there is nobody in the room. Where does SwitchBot come to solve this issue? For this I will be using SwitchBot contact sensor. This is really simple small device, a bit larger than the Akara door and window sensor, that you just insert two AAA batteries which are also included in the box. If we compare this contact sensor from SwitchBot, that is Bluetooth powered, with a similar device from the Akara that is Zigbee powered. This SwitchBot sensor would replace at least two if not three Akara devices. It would be door and window sensor, motion sensor and a button or a switch. If you are implementing this inside Home Assistant via the Bluetooth integration, it would replace only door and window and the motion sensor. As far as I know, at this point there is no way to register the push button on the contact sensor. So what's the general idea? We are all creatures of habit and that's where this contact sensor comes to play. I know exactly when my daughter is or isn't at home by just looking at her door. If we combine it with the motion sensor activity of this contact sensor, we just get a double check of that same state. When my teen is at home, her room doors are always closed. If she's out, then the doors are open. So that's what I will be using. But there is also a catch, since this contact sensor, which is a door or window sensor, also has motion sensor in it. I can register if the motion was detected prior to door opening or if the motion was detected after the door was already open. And what's the difference? If the motion was detected prior to door being open, that means that somebody is approaching the door or that there is activity in the room. If the door is already open and there is a motion activity, I know that somebody has just entered the room. So combining those two entities, door window sensor and the motion sensor, we can create some nice and interesting automations. For the purpose of this video, I have almost unboxed my Home Assistant Yellow, just so that I can stick the Bluetooth stick in it, because my version of Home Assistant doesn't have onboard Bluetooth, but even if my Home Assistant Yellow would have Bluetooth on board of the CM4 module, I still wouldn't use it because it is recommended that Bluetooth device is connected to Home Assistant via the extension cord. That way there are no issues with the interference from other electronic components. So after I almost unboxed my Home Assistant, it was time to start everything up for the first time. Let's write a name and let's create a count. Let's give it a name to Jamia. The elevation is roughly, I think, around 120 meters. We will leave here metrics. Although Croatia is still using Croatian Kuna up until the 31st of December of this year, from the 1st of January we are introducing the Euro. And if you are in Croatia, no, there is no way to convert the currency inside Home Assistant currently. So if you have any sensors that were calculating cost of something in Croatian Kuna, Unfortunately, from the 1st of January, you will have to start from scratch. Next, let's tick everything here because we want to share the information with the Home Assistant devs. Next, and immediately Home Assistant has found a bunch of devices that exist in my home. I will just press finish and let's try to add Bluetooth. Click on submit and finish. As soon as we have added Bluetooth integration, Home Assistant has found contact sensor, second contact sensor, but also the meter plus version, second meter and the hand. Hand is SwitchBot bot. Let's add the contact sensor. I have two contact sensors and by the way, Home Assistant is not able to pull the name of the device if you have the same device inside your SwitchBot app. What you would have to do to find what device is what, you would have to go to the SwitchBot app and go to the device and then about page and see the MAC address. I know that this one is located in a Zeta room and this one is located in Luca room. So let's configure it. Zeta door. Password has to be empty for those devices. Add new area. Zeta room. Finish. And let's also add this one. Submit. 
add new area and press finish. While we are here, let me add other devices. This E9 is my kitchen sensor and kitchen sensor was the original meter, while this one D5 is my living room sensor and this is meter plus. We can also add this switchboard pot. If we now go and check devices we just added, for example, this Luca room, we can see that this one device has six entities. And those six entities are door status, is it closed or not? Has the light been detected? And is there motion in the room? No, because yeah, she's still sleeping. On the other hand, Zeta room, one device. We can see that the door is closed. She's learning from her older sister, but light is detected and motion is not detected. If she opens and closes the door, we can see it in the logbook by first being open and then closed. Let's create automation. Only do something if Zeta door motion detected is detecting motion. That is the condition. And then we will be also using Zeta door and door is opened. Let's name this Zeta exiting the room. Trigger will be Zeta door. If the Zeta door is opened and the condition that the Zeta motion detected is detecting motion, then we can create action. And that action, for example, can be device Zeta desk, turn off Zeta desk light, save. So each time Zeta approaches the door, opens the door, the light on her desk would turn off. Yeah, but this is just a simple sample automation that will not end up looking like this. One additional thing that I would need to add here is some kind of timer, because I want to make sure that she doesn't return in a couple of seconds back to her room or closes the door. If she would close the door, I know that she returned to her room. Also, please note that automations editor in 2022.9 will look completely different. So what you see here now is not something that you will be seeing inside Home Assistant in a couple of days. Is it worth buying contact sensor from SwitchBot instead of some more advanced sensors such as Akara One that has a microwave sensor and it can detect not just if there is a movement, but if there is a person in a room, if it's in a specific quadrant, moving, approaching, etc or even investing in a DIY project that you can do yourself or buy from, I don't know, somebody who will probably be selling them. It's all up to you. This sensor is very simple sensor. It doesn't cost that much. And all you need to have for it to work is a Bluetooth capability, either in the ESP32 board, which can be used as a host for it, or inside Home Assistant via the Bluetooth integrations that's already there. The question is, how much money will I save? So let's look at the numbers. Combined power usage of these three light bulbs and this LED strip is 80 watts. If I calculate that the light is on for four hours a day when there is nobody in the room, that's total of 0.32 kilowatt hours per day. And if we take in this calculation that, for example, this is needed only during the school days, although it's not just school days, and the total number of school days is 175 school days per calendar year, we get to the number of 56 kilowatt hours just for this table light, those two ceiling lights or one ceiling light with two bulbs and this WLED light. Current price of kilowatt hour in Croatia is 0 0.9535, which roughly is 0 0.13 euros or 13 cents per kilowatt hour. Total cost of running these lights in that room for 4 hours for 175 days a year is 53.4 kunas, or calculated into euros, that's 7.09 euros. If we look at my younger daughter room, she has 4 lights, desk light, ceiling light, goose, which is a floor light and also one additional table light. And yes, she also has WLED in her room. Combine these all lights use 75 watts of power. If we calculate 200 days per year, we end up with a rough estimation that 60 kilowatt hours of power or energy is wasted during the year. If we automate this with a switchboard contact sensor, we could potentially be saving 
7.6 euros or in kunas 57 kunas and 21 lipa. By using two contact sensors in these two rooms, my potential of saving money is 14 euros per year, which is not that much. But if I combine it with other automations that I can run with this contact sensor, I can even improve that, but not just improve it by power saving or money saving, but also creating automations that would, for example, track the ambient light because these sensors from Switchboard has also a light sensor. And then I can slowly dim the lights on or in the morning, if needed, dim the lights off. I really do hope that you did enjoy this If This Then That energy challenge video sponsored by the Switchbot. But don't forget, there are a ton of other videos from other creators. And I will be leaving a link to the playlist, both up in the corner and also down in the description of the video. If you are ready to join the If This Then That energy challenge, just use the links that are provided down in the description of the video. The links to all devices I have used here will also be in the description of the video. And I once again want to thank Switchbot for sponsoring this video. If this, then that and uh, Brian for creating and inviting me and other creators to this energy challenge. And also each and every one of you that has already joined the challenge. The challenge for this year is to try and save up up to or more than $100,000 in the energy savings. Don't forget to join it. If you did like this video, please don't forget to give me a like. If you want to see the video about the Home Assistant Yellow from my perspective, leave a comment down in the comment description so I can create a separate video on it. But let's not forget all those wonderful people that are supporting me and have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. And also thanks to each and every one of you who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button down below. Every second Saturday I also have streams, so if you do not want to miss my streams or miss the notification for my next video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also bell so you get notified on the future video updates and streams. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.